Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be rebuilding the rear hub on the VFR 800. Now, um, the adjusters on these for the chain tension are eccentric and they have a tendency to, to seize in place. Uh, they do require a little bit of um, maintenance in order to keep them moving nice and smoothly. If uh, water is allowed to get in there, uh, corrosion will set in. Uh, and uh, you have no other option then but to strip the whole assembly apart just to be able to adjust your chain, which is frankly a pain. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to pull the whole assembly apart. We're going to replace all the um, seals and the bearings. As you can see, I've got a big bag full of seals and bearings here. All of those inside the, uh, inside the hub carrier. Um, and uh, yeah, and then we will reassemble it and get it all back on the bike. So stick around and uh, thanks for stopping by. Okay, so obviously what, we, uh, what we're looking at is down here. We need to uh, remove the chain from the sprocket. Um, we need to remove this big nut here um, and then the assembly will pretty much come apart. Um, obviously the wheel will come off and all that good stuff. Before I begin though, in order to give me good access to get the chain off and so that I don't damage anything, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the, uh, the hugger and the chain guard off uh, so that they're out of the way and then there won't be anything stopping me getting the chain uh, the chain off the sprocket. Uh, in order to do that, it's just a few bolts um, holding it on. One's behind the footrest, so the footrest hanger needs to come off again. That's only two bolts. Um, one just here. On this, because it incorporates the hugger as well, there's another bracket underneath which bolts under, under, on the underside. Uh, all pretty straightforward, so I won't bore you with that. What I'll do, I'll get all of this off, and then I'll bring it back in when we're, uh, we're going to actually look at the hub itself. Right then, as we can see, um, we've now got uh, nothing around the chain, so I can I can slacken the uh, adjuster off and we can get the chain off Absolutely no bother whatsoever, and there's nothing gonna stop us doing that um, Obviously all of this has been removed. There's a bolt there bolt there um, The bolt there for the for the chain for the chain guide uh, that one bolts into the rear uh, Location For this one obviously this is aftermarket um, made by King Carbon, if anyone's interested. Well, one thing I did point out, there's like some of these push pins, these plastic push pins, one there, and you can see this one did break when I came up, when I came to take it apart. It's actually still usable. Um, however, I am going to replace that with a new one. And there should have been one there, but it was completely missing. So I'll, uh, I'll get a couple of those ordered up um, and then I can uh, get that fully put back together again without any dramas. Anyway, um, obviously this is all need a clean, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna put this to one side now and um, move on. Okay, right then. What we can do now is um, I could slacken off the adjuster and then remove the chain. But what I'm gonna do first is I'm actually going to break this big nut here. Now this nut is tightened to 210, uh, 201 newton meters which is, um, I think it's around about 148 pounds feet. Um, it, you know, in old money, so it's gonna be tight. What I need to do, obviously, is we need to stop this hub moving. So we need to apply pressure to the brake as I crack that off. So um, you'll probably need a assistant to help you with this. So let's get on with that. Okay, in order to get this nut off, we'll pop this cap off. Come on, off you come, there we go. Right. On the nut, <clears throat> I'm not sure if it's coming out on the camera very well, but just here, it's the nut itself is staked to the axle. So obviously if we try and just crack that off, um, it'll take more effort than is actually necessary. It probably would go eventually, but it would take more effort than necessary and potentially damage the axle. What I'm gonna do is obviously try my best to remove that staking um, to give us a, a better chance of getting the, getting the nut off um, easily. What I've got here, I've got this rubbish old chisel that I use purely for this kind of thing. I don't use it for anything else other than messing around with stakes on nuts. Um, and what I'm gonna do is just try and get it underneath. And there we go. 
So there we are, as you can see, we've unstaked it and that should give us a better chance of getting this nut off. So what I need to do now is I've got a 46 millimeter socket, 46 mil. So you'll need one of those um, in order to get this off. Now I could use my, my Dugger Dugger uh, on it and it'd probably get it off to be fair. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty, it's a pretty good gun that one. There's good torque. However, not everyone has one of those. So I'm going to go old school and use a big, massive breaker bar. You could obviously use um, whatever you've got to hand, as long as you can get a good amount of torque onto it uh, to get it off. So next thing we'll do, I'll get my assistant to hold the brake and we'll get that nut off. Okay, so my assistant, which happens to be my lovely wife, is pressing my rear brake down as hard as she can. And that, as you can see, is locking the uh, locking it and stopping it from moving. The, the brake pads and the caliper are all, are all that's holding this in place. So with my breaker bar, <clears throat> as you can see, this is tight. Right, let's have another go. Whew. Right, I think what I might do is actually put it into gear as well. Put it into gear, that'll also assist. So if I let go of the brake. Okay, I've put it in the second gear as well. Right, press the brake. Press the brake. <sighs> Think we got it. Oh, that was a battle. Oh, right. Well, now. Have... What I'm going to do now is rest for a few minutes, have a cup of tea and recover because that was pretty hardcore. See you all in a sec. Okay, so after that Herculean effort of getting that nut undone, what we can do now is take our 17 socket and undo the clamp for the eccentric adjuster isn't too tight and then with our chain tool we can as you can see this one moves nice and free as you can as you can see look it's moving lovely and free so anyway what we can do is I can rotate it and put plenty of slack in the chain and then I can just lift the chain off Okay, I'll just rest that there. I'm not worried about it being on the floor in the dirt and crap because I will give it a little bit of a good clean. Um, it needs a clean anyway. Uh, so yeah, when, when I put it all back together, I'll clean and lubricate it and all that good stuff. Okay, so now that is off. Let's finish getting this nut off. And it's jammed up a little bit there, so let me just... And there we are. Yeah, I think what was happening on the part where where the staking goes, it was actually it was actually cutting the thread on the nut and uh, causing it to jam up. But yeah, it's fine, and there doesn't appear to be any damage to any of the threads there anyway. So they're all good. Right, uh, we have a. I don't know if you can tell, but it's slightly conical. It's like a conical washer, uh, which sits behind that nut. So we'll put them to one side. Now, this is scrap. Um, these are a one-shot deal. Once it's been 
unpeened, it's uh, it's rubbish. So I've got a new one in my little bag of bits, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll replace it when the time comes. So now we should be able to pull this off. Ah, interesting. What I did forget to do is take this off. Obviously, it's in the way. So that is held in with a couple of machine screws, I should imagine. Uh, yep, two, two of them. Let me get underneath there and get them off. What size of those? Are they eight or nine? Eight. <laughs> And there we go. Uh, two, just two little eight mil bolts. Hold this in underneath. So we'll pop that down there. Right, now we can come back to the sprocket and it should come off without any real problems. And there we go. There is the sprocket and its carrier. And in here, we can find all the cush drives, um, which look like they've seen better days, if I'm being honest. Um, they're actually supposed to be joined together like that. Uh, kind of like that one, actually. They're supposed to be joined together like that. But that's not, you know, that's not a showstopper. I'm not gonna worry about that too much. Okay, so we've got a bearing in here, just there, as you can see, and here we've got some spacers and all that good stuff so we need to make sure that we put them all back together in the same order. So let me put this on the bench and then we'll look at what we're going to do next. The only thing stopping is removing the axle uh, complete with the, with the disc now. This will literally slide out now. The only thing stopping it is the brake caliper being on there. So we'll remove the two bolts for the brake caliper. Whoops. There's one. They're so much easier to get to without the uh, sprocket assembly on. Uh, if you can remember when I was um, messing around doing brake pads or doing the fluid change, this one here was particularly hard to get to. It was a right pain. Uh, but as you can see here, absolutely no bother whatsoever. And there we are. There is the caliper removed. So we'll tuck that up there so it's not hanging from its uh, hoses because it's not, it's not really that good for them. And pop the two bolts down there. Right, now we should be able to wiggle the axle out. And there we are. There is the rear axle removed. Um, there is a bit of grease in there. You can see there's grease, evidence of grease in there. Um, and obviously these, the needle bearings inside there should be heavily greased. Um, but yeah, so obviously now, if you were gonna replace the disc, now is the time to do it. Um, simply a case of undoing the, the, uh, the, the four nuts behind these bolts and then the discs off, discs on, um, and the ABS reluctant ring is held in with these four little torques bolts there so again you can uh, you can swap that over if necessary right let's get this over on the bench and then we'll look at getting the whole bearing carrier assembly off of the bike okay next thing we need to do is we need to go around the other side of the bike in a second because we need to remove the torque arm but interestingly enough the bottom bolt here for on this torque arm there's supposed to be a split pin in there uh, there, there is the hole for it but there isn't one um so Someone's had it off at some point in the past and not refitted it. So anyway, uh, moving on, let's get around the other side of the bike and take that assembly off. Okay, so let's get these two bolts out, obviously. There should have been a split pin or a cotter pin, uh, as some people like to call it, in this one. 
but there wasn't in this instance. Oops. But there will be when it goes back on. You can see there's the hole. It's actually all gummed up with rubbish, so it does need a good clean out. You can just about make it out there. Um, I'll give that a good clean out and then we'll get a new split pin in there. Um, when we come to reassembly. Right, that top one doesn't need undoing. Um, that's perfectly fine. Uh, so now what we need to do is remove this. On here, on this ring, we can see there's a huge um, snap ring. Now, what I need to do is open her up or get something behind. I don't have a um, external uh, circlip pliers. I've got the wrong type. I should have the other type for this, but these will have to do because it's all I've got. And so therefore I'm having to also use a screwdriver to lever it out of place. What I should have is one, so mine, when you squeeze them, they close. What I should have is the ones that go the opposite way around. When you squeeze them, they open. Um, I don't have a set of those. So I am having to adapt and overcome, so to speak. without damaging it as you can see we didn't bend it out of shape there is a danger sometimes that you can bend them out of shape and then you just need to replace it if that's the case but uh yeah we'll um we'll uh, be able to refit that i'll give it a good clean and then it should uh, should all be good right now now that's off we can look at removing the rest of the assembly and there we go that's oops maybe just grab the rear caliper again and put it back up there. Don't want that to fall off. Right, that's that removed. Obviously, that's the ABS sensor. Um, but that doesn't need to be disconnected. We can leave that as it is. I'll give this all a good clean before we, uh, before we put it back together. And then now, we can remove the entire bearing carrier. Now, what, uh, the problem with these is that they uh, they corrode and you can see evidence of some corrosion in here look this is not too bad um, to be perfectly honest I'll give it a good clean out um, there's nothing really nothing really terrible on here but yeah they uh, they do like to corrode together and once they corrode together they can be a right pig to get apart so that's worth bearing in mind um, I'll give it a good clean up and then I like, I'd like to put a little bit of grease in there just to allow uh, good free movement for the rest of its service life until we pull it apart again to redo this job. Um, and uh, yeah, then it should be good for many, many thousand more miles. Okay, as you can see here, what we've got on this side is a needle roller bearing. Needle roller bearing on this side and on this side we've got just a regular ball bearing. Now, they need to be removed and we need to uh, use a press basically to get them out. And we'll start with the ball bearing. As you can see, the ball bearing diameter is much smaller than that of the needle bearing. So we can get into that one and then turn it over and get the needle bearing out. So that's what we'll do next. We'll look at getting all the bearings changed on this and giving it a good clean. Right then, let's look at the, uh, the bearing carrier first. On each side there is an oil seal. This is the oil seal here and you can just see inside is the needle roller. This side, again, what we've got, we've got an oil seal on the outside and then there is a collar. Um, this here up to that point is a collar which again needs to come out and then after that is the, uh, 
is the bearing itself. Um, I believe there's a retaining ring on the inside of that collar. I'll have to look in the manual, but we'll, obviously we'll come to that in a second. Um, so first thing I need to do is get these old seals out. Just lever them out with a, uh, with a screwdriver, just like so. And this one's probably going to be a bit more of a, a bit more of a pain, but oh nope, nope, that came out quite easily. And there we go. There is the collar that I was talking about. And yes, there is. Right, so under here you can see there's a ring, like a retaining ring, kind of like a, a, a circlip. And again, that will need to that'll need to come out. I'll get um, I'll get a set of pliers out in a second and we'll get that out. Once that's out, there's nothing really stopping us removing the bearing. Um, Again, uh, it's just a case of pushing it out. This side as well also has that same ring. You can see the gap in it just there. And there's the, there's the ring itself. So what I'll do, I'll get those out um, and then we'll, we'll look at pressing out the bearings. one they're a bit of a swine to get out because as you're trying to pull it out the whole thing wants to twist so it's just because of persevering really and same for this guy right then i've got the snap rings removed both of them from each side. They were a bit of a pain, but um, I persevered with a couple of little screwdrivers and a scriber and eventually they came out. Um, but obviously, yeah, it's just uh, awkward to stop them turning and lever them out at the same time. Anyway, right. What we need to do now is get both sets of bearings out. Now, as, as I mentioned earlier on, the, uh, the, the, the ball bearing one on this side is actually uh, got a narrower diameter uh, inside diameter than the, the roller bearing so that's the one we're going to pull out first so what I've got I've got a couple of sockets here um, this one is a 30 mil I think wrong 36 mil and this one's a 45 mil and what I'm going to do that one fits neatly inside like so and uh, what I can do I can then use my six ton press to push it out and then what I'll do this will bear onto that socket and push the bearing out so let's crack on with that what I do need to do though is obviously be mindful of the fact that I need to leave room for the bearing to come out so there we go right. Now, let's close the valve. And we can start to press her out. Shouldn't take a massive amount of effort to get it out. Um, and there are loads of different methods by which to do this. Um, obviously, having this press does make things does make things a lot easier and there we go that is the bearing coming out and we'll just keep going until sometimes it falls out the bottom and there we go that's one half and there is the other half right then on one side what we can do now relax this and then what we need to do now is turn her over so in here obviously we'll make sure that that's nice and clean prior to installing the uh, the other new bearing uh, and what we need to do now is um, we need to get the needle roller bearing out so what I'll do uh, in fact no I won't use that at all because it won't fit uh, and that one's too small. So what I need to do is I need to find a socket that will fit inside this hole but will also bear on the uh, on the needle bearing. Okay, 
So the 45 mil socket that I mentioned earlier is a perfect size for the actual bearing. However, on the inside here, it won't go through to the back of the bearing. So whilst that'll be perfect for getting the new bearing in, what I need to get that one out is um, a smaller one. This one's a 41 mil, and as you can see, it fits through quite nicely. And if I drop it all the way through, you can see there that it's bearing on the, uh, on the outside of the needle bearing quite nicely. So, yeah, that should, uh, that should be fine. What I need to do now is pop it in the, uh, in the press. What I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna put, I've got this little, I don't even know where I got that from. It's a washer of some kind off of something. And I'll pop that on the top because otherwise that'll try to drive into the, <laughs> into there. And I don't really want it to because it'll damage something. And then all we need to do is, as we did before, simply press her out. Right, get a bit of pressure behind, and there we go. socket and there is the old bearing removed okay so what we need to do next is obviously get the new bearings in now what I do want to do is have a little quick discussion about this one in particular this is an expensive bearing from the dealer you're looking at uh, I think it's circa 80 quid um, for one of these which is a ludicrous amount of money now um, I actually go past a bearing supplier on my way to work and on the way home one evening I, I stopped in and asked him about this and to see if he could basically supply um, a bearing identical in every way that doesn't come from Honda um, and obviously therefore make it incredibly cheaper. Now he was able to supply me a needle roller bearing of these dimensions uh, obviously the thickness, the inside diameter, the outside diameter, etc, etc, um, for around about 14 pounds, 14 to 15 quid, which is an, an ridiculous saving um, over the OEM uh, part. However, I will say that the OEM one has this, I don't know if you can make it out very well because it's all, all the grease on it, but there is a rubber seal on the inside of this bearing. And that, um, that this end actually points into the bearing carrier. Now, one thing he couldn't do, he could not supply me with a, one of these bearings with that seal. So, if you want the bearing with that seal, you will have to go to Honda, unfortunately. He was not able to get me one, and he said the only way you're gonna get that seal on a bearing is to go to Honda, which is a shame. Now, I'm fairly sure that there's people in the past that have just replaced this bearing using a non-factory part and just ignored the seal. Um, your bite, your choice. Personally, I've, that seal's been put there for a reason, and I'm guessing it's to prevent ingress of moisture, dirt, etc., etc. So I'm gonna. I have shackled out for the for the original Honda part on this, but obviously, you know, it's your choice. Um, do with it what you will. Anyway, we're at a position now where we can fit the new bearings. Okay then. Right. Let's get some of this stuff out of our bag of bits. There are the oil sills, we'll be fitting those shortly. This one is the ball bearing bearing. That one's for the sprocket carrier. And this one is the needle bearing. Uh, don't need that at the moment. Need that later. Got an O-ring there. Right, pull all of those to one side. We don't need any of those right this moment. In fact, we don't need those either. Right. Okay, so let's bust the bag open on the seals, if I can get into it. Right, here is the ball bearing. And here is 
needle bone. Now, as you can see, there's loads of grease all in here, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get some more uh, multi-purpose grease. It's just multi-purpose grease for this and give it a good packing out. Um, these are sealed bearings, so they're, they're all ready lubricated. There's no need to uh, do anything with those. Um, so yeah, what I'll do, I'll go and grab some grease. We'll give this a really, really good grease. You, you can't over grease um, a roller bearing. And then we'll uh, look at getting it fitted. Okay, going back to what I was saying earlier on about the seal, here you can you can see the oil seal that I was talking about that you only get on a Honda one. Um, yeah, like I said, the guy the guy at the bearing supplier wouldn't be able to get me one with that seal on. Um, that's not to say that other bearing suppliers can't, but this particular one couldn't. Anyway, yeah, it's, this is just a multi-purpose grease. This particular one's made by Castrol. It doesn't have to be, obviously. And what I'm doing is we're just absolutely packing this full of grease. As I said, you can't over grease it. And any excess that squirts out, we'll just wipe it up later. Okay, so. That's that. Right. What we want to do now is obviously we need to fit it into the bearing carrier. Now it only goes in one way and the way it goes in is oil seal pointing inwards. So if we drop it into position like so. What we'll try and do is try and square it up best we can like that. Then what we need to do is obviously press it in. Now there's several different methods you can use that you can you can drive it in using the old bearing um you know uh i'm going to use the big socket that i've got specifically you know which is happens to be the right size so i'll um i'll get it uh i'll get it into the into the uh into the press let's lift her up a bit I think what I might need to do actually is just drop the bed down. There we go. Right. I think what I might do actually beforehand is I've got some bearing drivers. I might uh, just use that to get it started. And then once we get below this lip, then I'll use my socket. Okay, let's, let's get it started. Do I lock that off? I don't think I did. Yes, I did. Right. Okay. Go. There we are, that's as far as we're going to get go with that bearing driver. So I'll pull that out of the way, get the socket in. Let's get the socket in place. I'll put that on the top so that so that doesn't force into the inside of the socket, and we'll carry on. And we'll just keep going until it's seated, and that feels like it's seated now. Take the pressure off the press. There we are. So we can see the little lip in there where obviously the spring clip's got to go. So we need to refit that in a minute. Uh, but that is the first of the bearings installed. Right then, next is the ball bearing. So let's get that in, get it on and get it pressed in. And what I'm using this time, instead of using a socket, 
I've just gone for a slightly different size of uh, their impressed tool. Go, go in, just keep going until it bottoms out. And there we are, she's bottomed. You just feel the pressure change uh, when um, you're trying to press it against the bottom of the bottom of its seat. Pop that out of the way. And there we are, she's nicely bottomed out and you can see again the groove for the clip so what I need to do next on this one is I need to get those clips in and then on this side obviously we've got this spacer and then we need to get the oil seals fitted okay let's get the spring clips in they go in a down sight easier than they came out as you can see that one so that's both the bearings being retained and all good lastly we need to do just a little bit of grease on the lips of the new oil seal and then we should be able to just push it into place like so here yeah, I went in really really easily now on this side we've got the little collar a little spacer that goes in just like so and there we go same with this one just a little bit of just a little bit of grease on the lips of the seal doesn't need to be um, red rubber grease for this we're not it's not the it's not the actual seal that we're lubricating it's the shaft inside the seal that we're lubricating so I'm sure somebody will probably comment on the fact that I didn't use red rubber grease in the comments because it's happened before anyway that is that assembly complete and ready to go back on the bike what we need to do next is the sprocket assembly because there's bearings in there which need to be replaced as well then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to separate the two halves of the sprocket assembly because we do need to get there's the bearing. These are the crush drives. Now, as I said earlier, these, these are actually supposed to be joined together. They're not supposed to fall apart like that. Um, I'm not gonna lose sleep about it. I probably will replace them at some point, just not now, because I don't have any. Um, so I can't, uh, I can't replace them, basically. So let's get all of them out for the moment. I'm gonna give all of this a good clean once we've got the bearings out, um, and then I can reinstall those. Okay, right, again I'll give all of this a good clean as well, right what I'll do, take the space of collar off, there's a seal in here again, we've got a brand new one of those, and that just needs levering out, just like that, okay, um, there should be an o-ring in this kit there it is there around here there's an o-ring as you can see and I've got a new one of those right here so I'll replace that in a moment but again I'm gonna give everything a good clean and um, also while this is off I'm gonna have a good look at the sprockets and check the teeth for wear and to be honest this one actually looks really really good what we're looking for is her any hooking or it's starting to look like a shark's fin because if it's hooking then it's worn and it needs to be replaced. Um, but yeah, this one, this one looks perfectly fine. Absolutely no dramas using this again at all. Okay, so this bearing needs to be pushed out from this side because um, obviously that's the side we need to fit it from. And uh, what I'll do, I'll probably find a, well, I haven't got a socket here right now, but I'll find a socket that fits in there and then we'll press it out using the press. 
What I'm actually going to use is I've got another part of the, uh, the kit, my bearing press kit, that will get that bearing out perfectly fine. I'm going to use this massive socket on there. So basically, I'm going to be pushing the bearing out into this. Um, and yeah, we should be fine. We should be fine with that. So let's get it all centered in the press and get it ready to press out. On the uh, on the sprocket uh, bearing, there is no um, there is no you know retaining clip, so it's just a case of pushing it straight up. And there we go. Okay, there's the old bearing. I can go in the bag of rubbish. And as you can see, I've given this a, a, a light clean uh, to get all the old chain lube and gunk off. Um, there's the spacer. There's the old oil seal. We don't need that either because we've got a brand new one right here. Okay, bearings there. Let's have a look at this bearing. And here it is. That's the brand new one. As you can see, it's, well, it's a bearing. It's not, uh, it's nothing too exciting. Um, and again, this one's a genuine Honda one. That one is just going to be pressed into place just like so. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to find something that will fit onto the outer side of the race. Uh, I'll probably go and grab another one of these. And then what we'll do, we'll get it into the, uh, uh, that one's too big. Yeah, we'll get it into the press and then we'll press it in. That is the new bearing seated and as you can see she's right up to right up to touch okay right then don't need that now what we need to do is we need to fit the new oil seal which is this one and again like just like before what we're gonna do is just pop a little bit of grease on the lips. Just like so. And then, again, we should be able to just press this in place by finger. If not, just a case of getting a, getting a socket and gently tapping it, tapping it into place. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get a socket on it. It's not quite going in, so. I'll get a socket and a hammer and we'll give it a tap. Alternatively, I can use my bearing drivers for the intent that they were designed for. And there we go, that is the ceiling. Next is this little spacer and that pops in just like just like so, and that is the sprocket carrier actually, um, you know, rebuilt. All we need to do is remove this little O-ring. I'll get my scriber, get this O-ring off, that one. I'm gonna give all of this a good clean, and then what we'll do, we'll fit the new O-ring onto this, uh, give it all a good clean out, and then we can get it all put back together, and then we can look again on the bike. that'll do that'll do nice right 
So, the new seal. What I'll do, we'll get a little bit of red rubber grease. I'll give that a, a good coat of red rubber grease and then we'll fit it on. So back on just like so that easy right there we are Lid on the grease right that can all be put back together now what we need to do is we need to get all the cush drives back in bearing in mind that most of them are broken uh, need to try and get them matched together and there we are they'll be fine okay put that spacer in there I think and then just a case of Put it together and there we go that is the whole assembly renewed so that can now go on the bike so what we're going to be doing next is reassembling it all back to the uh, all back to the bike um, everything's done all the bearings are changed and everything is good um, so yeah let's uh, let's get to it and um, get it all back on the bike okay so we're ready to fit the uh, the bearing carrier back into the rear axle as you can see I've given this a good uh, a good clean because uh, it was pretty bogging I got rid of all the old chain lube and road grime and all that sort of stuff so this is ready to go in now obviously it goes in that way um, the brake carrier sits on this ring with the circlip uh, with the circlip in in its position uh, circlip just there that sits in that groove so uh, yeah we'll, we'll get to that assembly in a second now what it doesn't tell you in the manual is to grease this um, it, it doesn't specify it because they don't believe that there's a need. Now, I'm going to, and the reason for this is because this does light to seat. Um, I'm not going overboard, I'm not absolutely caking it in. All I'm doing is putting a little bit of grease on the inside face, just so that it doesn't, it doesn't seat, really. Um, and, you know, it, it's a bit of a no-brainer really why why wouldn't you um, grease something that is expected to move when required uh, so yeah that's um that's that's all I'm gonna do just a little bit like that and that should hopefully prevent it from corroding corroding to the axle and then being seized in position and yeah hopefully it'll give us plenty of uh, you know, plenty of um, years of reliable service and we'll be able to adjust the chain as and when required. Okay, what I need to do around now is go around to the other side, get all the brake carrier and all that good stuff, mount it on and then we'll get the circle clip on. Right then, so let's get the brake hanger on. Uh, obviously the ABS sensor comes at the back and this is where the caliper mounts as you can see just there and then what we need to do is we need to get this circlip on now this is going to be a swine uh, of that i've absolutely no doubt so what i'm going to do i'm going to struggle through this and then i'll bring you back in once i've got it on okay as you can see i gave the uh, the, the caliper carrier a darn good cleaning as well and what we need to do now is fit this um this bolt now as you can see in the end of the bolt there's two sets of holes now both of those were completely blocked off um, there was no split pin in there there's supposed to be a split pin and I have a new one here so we'll fit that um, once we've torqued the bolt in now I'm guessing at some point the previous owner removed this bolt for whatever reason didn't bother getting the old one out and then realized he couldn't get a split pin in because he hadn't removed the old one. I actually had to drill these holes out in order to remove the old one. It was it was in there. It wasn't it wasn't one of them to give up. So so yeah, it's all it's as good as new. So we can install that 
in place and what we need to do is torque this one. This one is torqued to 34 newton meters so it's not a ridiculous torque but important nonetheless. So I've got the torque red set. There's 34. Okay, I'll fit the split pin and then we'll bring you back in when we come and fit the rear axle. Right, next step is the axle. We're gonna refit the axle back through, just like so, dead easy. Like that. And here we are, it's as simple as that. Right, what we need to do next, get the caliper on and then we can look at getting the stuff on the other side of the bike on and all talked up. Okay, so caliper reinstalled, bolts done up. Uh, they're 31 Newton meters as per the book. And there's a little dab of, a little dab of Loctite on there just to make sure that they can't vibrate loose. Okay, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna install the um, sprocket and carrier assembly. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on the splines just to aid fitment and future removal. And then, it's a case of simply slotting her into place, just like so. Making sure she's sat right, and there we are. Right, the next thing we need to do is install our washer. This is basically a spring washer, and hopefully you can make out on the video that it is concave. I did mention it earlier on, and obviously the bevel points outwards, just like so. And then next, we've got our brand new nut. As you saw earlier, the old one had a stake in it. So we were scrapping it and fitting a new one in its place. So what I need to do is get that up to touch, get the chain on, all that good stuff. And then I'll bring you back in when we come to talking this bad boy up because it's done to 201 Newton meters and it's gonna be hench. Right, what I've had to do for this is bring out the big guns because believe it or not, my um, I've got several torque wrenches. Several of them go uh, up to 200 Newton meters, but not over 200 meters. And this needs 201, so I want it to be accurate. So I've had to get this big beast out. Uh, and as you can see, this is, this is the big gun. Okay, my assistant is pressing the brake for me and um, the bike is again in gear. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna torque her up and there we go that was 201 newton meters it, it seemed like uh, almost effortless with that massive wrench because the lever's so long it um it breaks really really well and it's an absolutely brilliant bit of kit so yeah we're now done up to 201 newton meters. So what we need to do next is stake the nut so that it can't come undone. And then that is that part of the job complete. Okay, what we wanna do is find the section of the axle where the little recess is, which is just here. And that is where we need to stake. So I've got my punch, just a case of getting it in the right place and giving it a good whack. And there we are, that's it staked. That is not gonna come undone without a fight. 201 newton meters and the nut is staked. Okay, so that little cap can go back on. That's, um, that's that part of the job done. What I need to do next is I need to get the hugger on and all that sort of good stuff and then we can get the wheel on. Okay, as you can see, we've got it all back together now and um, everything's all done. The only thing I've got to do now is just talk the the, uh, the adjuster bolt basically. Um, I've got everything uh, everything done, the chain tension's right and everything. All I've got to do is tighten this up, 74 Newton meters. And there we go. That is it, that's everything we need to do. All I've got to do now is put the wheel back on and the bike is good to go. So, there we go. That's the job done. Uh, quite an in-depth in uh, job. You know, it's it's not one to uh, be taken lightly, certainly, because you, you do need a few 
tools that a lot of people maybe not not going to have in their arsenal. So you may need to uh, you may certainly may need to get a press or something like that in order to get these bearings out because they're in there obviously for uh, for obvious reasons. Anyway, guys, hopefully you uh, you enjoyed this video, and uh, I'll see you all again for the next one. Take care. Bye bye now.